I'm doing great, Mario. How you doing today? I'm good. Good to meet you. Hey, thank you so much um, uh, for just stopping by and chopping it up on the podcast. Man, this is awesome. Um, if you want, we could just start right now. Yeah, uh, yeah let's do it. Hey, Mario, um, I got to say this up front. I love what you're doing, but I don't know if you know a thing or two about my podcast, but every guest we have here, we have something called the over-the-top introduction, mainly because we're so grateful for people like yourself giving us a little bit of your time, giving a little bit of your energy. So can I do my thing? Can I give the over-the-top introduction for you? Yeah, absolutely. So let's get it started. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest hails from the lightning capital of the world, a.k.a. Tampa, Florida. He is a writer, director. He is a second-generation filmmaker. He is the pride of the University of South Florida's law department. Go Bulls! You may know him from such projects such as Unreal and what we're here to talk about today, his directorial debut of the film The Throwback in theaters and on demand March 15, 2024. Mario Garcia, welcome to the podcast. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mario, this is awesome. I got a chance to watch the screen. I got a chance to watch the film. Awesome. And I am going to do something very hard. It's very hard to talk about this thing without spoiling it. So I'm going to word my questions very nicely, mainly because of the subject matter. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I got to ask, like, just filming this, it's just such a great project. Where does the idea of the throwback comes from? Where, where does that come from? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I started writing it about maybe 10 years ago you know it's one of those like are you right you get the, through the first act and then it's like i don't know i don't know if this is a project or not uh but so so where does it come from evolves because 10 years ago it was like this i was like in the thick of it with with my own kids right and you know it's like gosh i, I really miss those days like when you know as much as i love like my family and things you know it's like i i i wish that i had a chance to go back and professionally maybe if I did this or so I started kind of playing around with the idea of of what if you could do it you know what if you had a chance to start all over and and relax a little bit right and um and and it was the dad's point of view right like right. and so um like what it, it's like be careful what you wish for because then what if the wife is the one that went back right and and not you know and she comes back and now she she thinks she's 19, but she's in her 40 something year old body and she's married to this overweight bald guy and she's saddled with these this these kids that she doesn't know how to raise and she didn't end up doing her career thing. But the the point back then was like the husband has to deal with the wife that's that's like this, right? Um and then as I and then I picked it up again years later, like probably around COVID time, and I started writing it again. And as I'm writing, and you know writers will will tell you like sometimes the characters start talking to you right and and the wife started talking to me more saying hey you know this is my story like i'm the one that has to deal with going back and and um reflecting on everything uh and so it kind of became more the wife story and the and the husband was was kind of in the in the story obviously but but it was more her journey um and I think by the time we ended up finishing the edit, I landed somewhere in the middle where it's it's their story. Uh, but I think it definitely comes from that kind of even personal middle age reflection of, you know, like did life turn out the way I wanted it to when I, you know, when I was 19, you know, I had all these ideas and this is was this was going to be my life. And now, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid 40s and I'm looking back and I'm like, but did it did it turn out that way? And I get that because when you look at the stuff and, and granted, I rock the ring and I, I, I know I have had some of those thoughts, too, in those movies like, hey, maybe if I made a left instead of a right, yeah, right. you know, things yeah. could have went a little differently. But one right. of the things about this film I thought that was pretty dope is the fact that. And I'm and I'm wording this very carefully, they kind of meet in the middle in yeah. a way. Because you can't necessarily have the future without the past. 
Right. But it's the things of the past that made the future worth having. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I know. I'm glad I'm glad you landed there because you know that that's kind of the theme, right? The mm -hmm. theme is is that you know, in a way we're always supposed to be where we're supposed to be. Uh and and the minute that you lose sight of that, that you're not appreciating that anymore is when you're kind of going against the universe and 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 you're asking for for more chaos in your life um and yeah i mean it's a it's a comedy and so everyone can kind of guess you know how it's going to end right but but the idea is that you know the journey to to that understanding is is uh what what is what the story is one of the most curious things about this film that isn't um necessarily a part of the film it was shot around the setting is like christmas time it's not a christmas movie by no my no, no stretch of the imagination is it a no. christmas movie but it was shot around christmas time what was it about christmas that made you think like okay if we're going to have some life-altering situation let's yeah. do it now yeah you know it's interesting because um my producer, Mike Alfieri, you know, we had discussions about whether this is a Christmas. It's like the Die Hard. Is this a Christmas movie or not? And because there's that element at the end where they're planning, you know, this Christmas festival. Uh, but it could have easily been a fall festival or an easy fe yeah. or Easter festival, right? And I think that's why you're saying it's not really a, a Christmas festival. And you see the wall. Uh, Look, Die Hard yeah. is a Christmas movie. If you're asking, yeah. it is a Christmas movie. This yeah. one isn't. It's still yeah. good. The throwback yeah. is it. It's, it's, it's yeah. not Christmas. But you know what? If you watch it at Christmas time, it's a Christmas movie, right? <laughs> if you watch it in the summer, it's not a Christmas movie. To some so. degree, I, I'm with that. I'm with that because yeah. even mm -hmm. though Christmas was a part of it, it wasn't the overarching theme of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if uh, if I would have called it the Christmas throwback, uh, then you know it could have easily like been on Hallmark or, or something yeah. like that, right? But hey, hey, don't knock that. You still can. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if you just did it two weeks later, you right. still can. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the the life, I, I I guess the it's it's interesting when you think about the time of the movie, right? And so they are building towards this Christmas festival, right, for the school. But when does it start? Because we we glossed over Thanksgiving and 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 Halloween just because you you have to you know make a film as compressed as possible. Um. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's a Christmas movie, like you said, but uh, there's definitely a Christmas element to it. Okay. Um one of, the cool, one of the cool things about this movie, and I and I have to ask this, this, this is my own personal thing, mm -hmm. casting. It was so awesome for this film. Yeah. What about the members of this cast that made you feel like this is who I had in mind? Did you have them mm -hmm. in mind while you were writing it? But you nailed it with the right choices. What was it about the casting of this project that just made it come together yeah i mean you know honestly uh day one of of shooting i don't i don't i didn't know a lot about directing a movie to, to be honest right um but what i learned is if you if you get a great cast they make your job easier not easy it's not easy directing a movie but but they definitely make your job easier especially when you're you know on a, on a lower budget you know 20 days we got to get in get out we got to get the takes um I think I was blessed. I had a, a casting director, Mia Kusumano, uh, who once we brought her on board, uh, it, it just for independent movies, like we can reach out as producers to uh, managers and, and agents, uh, but it's not like a casting uh, director reaching out to them. Right. Um, and so that Justina Machado, I had seen her, you know, because for the part of Kate, it was tricky because you want somebody that can do the the funny thing. I mean, it was a lot to ask of this of this actor because she had to be 19 year old Kate and she had to be 45 year old Kate. And sometimes we were shooting in the same day where it's like in the morning, she's 19 and in the afternoon after lunch, she's 45. Right. So we made life really difficult for her. So she couldn't stay as 19 year old Kate the whole day. Uh, and so. So you had to be funny, but you had to be able to do the heartfelt part too. And, and sometimes we'd see an actress and she was hilarious, but it's like, wow, but can she do the heartfelt stuff? And then we'd see somebody who's really, really good, but can she do the, the physical comedy? Uh, with Justina, uh, my father told me about One Day at a Time on Netflix. You know, we're, we're of Cuban origin and one the, the reboot of One Day at a yeah. Time. 
unbelievable show on Netflix. Um, it it kind of it was surrounded around this Cuban family, and so I started watching it, and like right away I was like, she's just awesome. She's she's the best, and and so pretty early on I had her in my head, um, and uh, so we went to the casting director and, and said we want Justina, and we went to Justina's manager. And Justina's manager happened to also represent Will Sasso, who was on our list as well. So it just kind of all came together once once just Justina came on board. Uh, Danielle also represents Greg Sulkin, who uh, from the Disney Channel shows. Greg at the time was dating Michelle, but but Michelle's also represented. And so um, the one person though that I had in my head from the minute I started writing that movie. Uh, the, the 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 version in, during the COVID is Bobby Lee for for mm. Charles and you know I, I still kind of pinch myself that we were able to get Bobby uh, and he came in and and for a few days knocked out his scenes and just had everyone in stitches uh, just like a super super great guy um, so those are kind of the known faces but but then I I, I kind of sprinkled it with the, the the ladies who played the mom and then Greg Pitts who played the doctor who people might recognize as the old face guy from from office space and Rhonda Shear yep. Rhonda Shear played the boss uh and Rhonda Shear was uh, on up all night like in the 90s like they used to have uh, on USA network this movie night so it was kind of fitting that you know throwing it back to the 90s that Rhonda Shear who was like this comedian and and model from the 90s um and now she's built like a an enterprise selling um selling bras and stuff on HSN. And so and she's local here in Tampa and uh she's just hilarious. Uh she's a legend, really. And so, you know, the fact that I was able to kind of like sprinkle the cast with these people that just know what they're doing, they're so professional, they show up and they nail it, um, really like just launched the project. Now I want to talk about the biggest co-star of this movie, mm -hmm. and that is the city of Tampa itself, right. mainly because it was Tampa all through this movie. Yeah. What what was so special? What is so special about Tampa yeah. and how it relates to not just you, but the movie? I talked about it a little bit in the intro, but mm -hmm. what about Tampa was just like, yeah, we need to make Tampa front and center. Yeah, well, you know, I am partial to Tampa because I I grew up here, uh, and I was born here and and in, in Barca, which is on the outskirts of Tampa. Um, but I was raised here, and um, and so I have a uh, I have a, a soft spot in my heart for for Tampa, and and so that's easy to say. But but the other reality is that there are movies that are shot here, that you know that that even take place in Tampa that they'll shoot somewhere else. Right. And so so they shoot in Tampa, but they won't ever acknowledge that it's Tampa. It's like, OK, we'll shoot in the beach, but but they don't ever say Clearwater Beach or or St. Petersburg Beach. And so so I did want Tampa to be a character, like you said, in the story and, and make it the backdrop because it's beautiful here. And um, and so from day one and, and the fact that I could sleep in my own bed too made it really uh, <laughs> awesome because it's hard enough uh, doing this, uh, the shoot. But but. And everyone here, the, the Tampa Film Commissioner, the St. Pete uh, Clearwater uh, Film Office, they were all so cooperative. They were all like on board on this from day one. Still to this day, uh, they've been awesome partners to work with. Hey, this is your directorial debut. This is your first time out. And you got a chance to do it in your hometown. You got a chance to do it with people you know and people you love. What was the chemistry like on set? You know... I think I think like it's funny because in the heat, in the heat of it, um, I, I I'm not paying attention to a lot of what's happening, right? Um, but I know that there was, from my perspective, um, everyone got along, everyone was having fun. Um, like sometimes we'd be shooting scenes, and and so we I would be in the room with the actors and 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 the first assistant director and then the 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 video village would be in a in a different room with the rest of the crew out there just kind of watching it on the little monitors and i could hear them laughing sometimes right at, at the scenes and i even cra it cracked up a lot uh so i feel like we all kind of got along uh you know it, it's 20 days of intense 12 12 days of shooting you know 12 hours of shooting but 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 15 16 hours together and so I'm sure that that uh, 
that it wasn't kind of uh, ice cream and cherries the whole time. But uh, but I think for the most part, we got through it and um, everyone got along. The crew, I mean, I can't say enough about how great they were with me. Uh, you know, being a first time director, I didn't go there pretending that I had done this before. Like I wanted really smart people, people that knew more than me around. And and um, and so that was really helpful as well. And they were really patient with a first time director. OK, I know we're getting up against it. Um, we're getting towards the end. But one thing I, I, I love to ask about this and any filmmaker or any creator, mm -hmm. what do you want the audience to feel after watching a film like this? Yeah, you know, it, it's 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 crazy because I started just with this simple story and and it's crazy how much it, min it mirrored my own life, you know, like the fact that I, I've sold scripts before, but never got made into a movie. Um, and, 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 you know, you, you kind of in this industry get close so many times and then it's like something always happens. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy when I did it, I was 51 years old, I think when, when we shot it and it was just making the decision that this is kind of what I want for my life and, and, and have being relentless and pursuing it. Uh, and, and realizing that, okay, you know, age is just a thing and it's not never too late. And that's basically what the theme of the movie is, right? Like, of, yeah. of you know, it's never too late to, to, to be what you want to be. And, um, and so I'm finding that the movie resonates, like it resonates, not just with moms, it, it resonates with like women and men and, and, and not just middle age you know, people in their twenties and, and that are just kind of launching their life. And uh, so, you know, what I'm hoping that people get out of this is it's, it's like not a movie that's going to win an Oscar, obviously, but, but it's just something that makes you feel good. You'll watch it for like 90 minutes and you'll, you'll learn to appreciate, you know, what you have in your life or where you're going in life and you'll smile at the end of it. And then that's it. You'll never watch it again. <laughs> it's fun. But, but for those 90 minutes, you're just going to have a really good time. Well, I'm not exactly sure about if you're going to watch it um, or not winning an Oscar, but we'll see because <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I'm oh. glad I got a chance to talk with you. And this is almost obligatory question. Hey, Mario, what's next on the horizon? Well, uh, next I'm still writing. I'm, I've got another uh, uh, project that I'm actually doing now uh, with Mike Alferi, the the producer on, on this. And um, and I have some more comedies that, that I've written that that hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get a chance. But, you know, it's, it's a process. So uh, but but I'll definitely be, be doing another one at some point. OK. Hey, whenever you're finished, you always have a home here. Appreciate we it. Thank you for your time. We thank you. You can come back. You could chop it up about whatever your next project is. And we wish you nothing but much success. And yeah. um, hey, I hope this isn't the last time, man, you chop it up and we could talk. Yeah, about no, this, I, look forward to, I look forward to talking to you again. All right. Well, Mario, man, you have an awesome day. And um, thank you so much. All right. Take care, Sam. All right. Bye.